My name is Dr. Michael Ryan. I'm welcoming you back to the Vertebrate Paleontology Department of the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Today we're going to be talking to you about the newly published horned dinosaur called Wendy Ceratops pinornensis. Wendy Ceratops was discovered in 2011 in southern Alberta along the Pinorn Grazing Reserve as part of the Southern Alberta Dinosaur Project, which is a collaborative project between the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and our colleagues up at the Royal Ontario Museum led by Dr. David Evans. Wendy Ceratops is actually found in a bone bed, a low diversity bone bed along the margin of a hill. We have probably three adult individuals and one small individual from totally disarticulated skeletons. So we have parts of the, of the body, legs, feet. We have parts of the skull significantly and that's what allowed us to describe this brand new dinosaur. In life, it would have been about 20 feet long, including its tail. It would have weighed about two tons. Because it's a horned dinosaur, it's herbivorous, which means it ate plants. One of the most interesting things about Wendy Ceratops is that it's one of the oldest centrosaurine horned dinosaurs known from North America. When we describe new horned dinosaurs, we look for the ornamentation on the face. So we're looking at the horns over the nose, we're looking at the horns over the eyes, and we're looking at the big shield off the back of the skull. Many of you are familiar with animals like Triceratops that have those big, large horns over the eyes and the big frill off the back. Triceratops lacks any ornamentation along the back of the frill. And what's unique about Wendy Ceratops is that a whole series of small horns that hook forward, uh, lining the entire margin all the way down to the cheek. Additionally, it's got a very um, low horn over its nose, but it appears to be intermediate between ancestral forms like Alberta Ceratops that was found very close to the Wendy Ceratops locality, which has a low banana-shaped lobe over top of its, of, its, of its nose, and versus the much later horned dinosaurs like Styracosaurus and Centrosaurus, it has a much broader, tall horn. So it appears that Wendy Ceratops is intermediate in those two forms. Wendy Ceratops is named after the woman who found it, Wendy Sloboda, who's a independent prospector in the areas that cover all the region of southern Alberta along the Montana border. She's been responsible for some of the most significant dinosaurs that I've been involved with describing and some of the most significant dinosaurs that now make up the collections. The ornamentation along the back of the frill and the other characters that we have have allowed us to do a detailed phylogenetic analysis, which means that we're looking at the evolutionary relationships between different types of horned dinosaurs. And interestingly, um, Wendy Ceratops appears to be very closely related to an Asian horned dinosaur called Cynoceratops. It's the only large-bodied ceratopsid, similar in shape and size to a centrosaur or triceratops, that has been found in Asia. They're roughly contemporaneous in age, and what we think may have happened is that Wendy ceratops, or animals very close related to it, may have actually given rise to the animals that Cynoceratops evolved from, and they actually migrated from North America back over to Asia. The bone bed itself has allowed us to understand much better um, the biology and paleobiology of these horned dinosaurs. We've been able to reconstruct the skeleton for the most part. We understand what the skull looks like because we have a population within a bone bed with different ages in it. We can tell something about their growth structure and these papers and research will be forthcoming in the future.